mics to your mouths, boys? It actually can't. Why? What do you mean you can't? Uh, my Good we evening. Just, we, Welcome again, to another my, episode of Time Trying to Figure This mic, Out. And now you're trying to figure... My mic has... Then why, why are we floppy. fixing this right now? Limp. Look at Listen, it. we all have our technical problems. I had my technical problems. Then Will's camera was displaying the menu. And now uh, I don't even know. What's going on with you, Nigel? It's just a floppy yeah, mic. We tried to so save some medication to fix that problem. That's okay. <laughs> it happens to everybody at some point. It's nothing to be ashamed of, Nigel. I'm not ashamed. I'm proud. <laughs> I'm proud of my limpy mic. Speaking of problems, we have an obligation. Every time, every time I, I do this to myself, it's like, okay, here's a good idea. We'll do something nice for people that, were, you know, like we'll do something personal. And then, and then it actually has to happen. And I'm like, I made a mistake. We, for the Patri Patreon for Safety Third, promised. What's that? Kevin. It's me. I, a little background for you guys. I get spam calls in Spanish, and it's like oh, for Obamacare, but I don't know how to make them stop. Like, I, I press every number, and it doesn't stop. Hola, me llamo Guillermo. Hola. Me llamo Guillermo. Uh, tengo un gato. <laughs> oh, they hung up. <laughs> they Come on. Did. Was the Spanish that bad? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Wow. What did I say? What, what was that? You just said I'm Guillermo. It's, it's, you, can't, you can't stop Every it. time I get one for the uh, automotive insurance, uh, they ask you, I don't know what the scam is. They, it's something about like, if you have a new car, they, they try to do like a three-way call with the dealership or some BS like that, and they get personal information. I don't really understand it. But uh, they always ask me what cars okay. I have, and I say... I just make something up. I like one time I said a Model T. One time I said I had like the, <laughs> the the four wheel drive 2019 Gronk <laughs> truck, and they just and they like they like oh do you have any other cars? And then I'm like yeah I also have the the 2021 uh, front wheel drive Gronk. <laughs> the only way to combat those calls is that everybody just has to pick up the call and like mess with the caller. I like to answer and I ask them. You know they say this is a recorded line. And I said, okay, I just want you to know this is also a recorded line. And they're like, uh, um, okay. I don't know. My technique was I just don't answer and then I block the number and I just never get spam calls anymore. What pisses me off is that they don't want you to waste their time. And so they have an automated system that calls and then waits on the line for a voice. It's like, they're like, absolutely do not even think oh, twice yeah. about wasting my time as the spam caller. But then when you pick up, yep. they'll gladly waste your time with this with the scam. Yeah, or it's like the automated, hello, we've been trying to reach mm -hmm. you. Are you there? Oh, yeah, okay. You know, it kind of like has a fake yeah. conversation. Like it, they can't hear you talking. Then you're like, I'm here, I'm here. And then they're like, okay, I hear you now. Would you like to contribute more money to your local police department by supporting our highway patrol, you know, fundraising event? Something like that. I, I just funny saying that because I haven't that, had that forever. And I just, it, it's because I just never, I don't answer the phone. If I don't recognize the number, I don't answer. I kind of like it. I that's like Kevin, it. Kevin, it provides a little bit of Kevin's entertainment. Kevin's problem. He enjoys if it. If it was any more. One time I asked them, I asked them if they had a extended warranty for somebody with a huge penis. <laughs> yeah, and then the guy they? says, like me. <laughs> did he actually? Yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> respect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, we got to talk about our obligation. So we made a tier on Patreon uh, for this podcast that after three months, you get a Polaroid. So we'll take a Polaroid of us and we'll sign it. I don't. I, I feel so weird saying that because it's like, I don't, does anybody actually want that sign? But people do. And so whatever. I mean, we could have done like used underwear or That's something. That's true. That's a lot of underwear though. Uh, but the problem was what I said, <laughs> what I said is that you would every three months, you would get one from somebody you haven't gotten one from. So over the course of a year, you could get one from like, you know, me, Kevin, Nigel, Alan. But what, what I didn't realize is that is a little bit more complicated than it sounds because now you have to have like a shifting deadline where people who started in between when we started probably should have mentioned this because the moment I saw that perk, uh, I, know, I know, uh, I spoke with Zach, the former editor and we both went. This is a nightmare that I don't want to be it's a part of. It's not that bad if you have the right tool to do it. But now I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, oh my god, I think we have to. I think we might have to like have a spreadsheet with a little a little script or a piece of custom software, like a small piece of custom software that manages the database. So does Patreon give you like uh, the date? Can you sort by the date that everybody joined in Patreon for that tier? You can do this, 
the problem is what it's like you want it to spit out basically an address and a name of what Polaroid goes to that address. That tool doesn't exist. <laughs> here's what here's what we do. If somebody can make that tool, we'll give you a free Polaroid and a free Galaxy Brain <laughs> subscription. <laughs> I think I, I uh, fifteen dollars. Kevin's month. thinking. I Kevin's have, thinking. I, I man, see, I could do it myself, but I really don't want to do it. I could have. Uh, I have this uh, um, guy Evan, this Australian guy working for me, who does a bunch of software stuff. Who's been doing a really good job. I might just have him do it, and maybe you can probably connect to the Patreon API. So it's like every month they could download the spreadsheet, figure out you know people are in the tier, the, who they've gotten already, uh, who they need to get, or if they've already gotten everyone, it picks a random one for them. Um, but yeah, anyways, we, we have to do that. So the, everyone who signed up for the Patreon when we first started it, I think we're basically coming up now on owing you a Polaroid. So that means we have to, uh, each of us buys a Polaroid camera and a bunch of uh, Polaroid shots and you just have to take a bunch of selfies. <laughs> like, you know, 200 of them just sitting there. No, well, I mean, we could. It could be 200 and then we just like, you send them oh, you're right. back yeah. here and then we'll send them to the company who fulfills the like cat warehouse merchandise and then just have them send them out. This is kind of a nightmare. It is a nightmare. To be I, honest. I remember talking to my mom like, a couple of years ago about trying to figure out like how do you how do you do sort of like more stuff directly with people? Like how do you interact directly with people? Because I, I don't know. I have a lot of fun uh, doing that. Like I, I think like sending people stuff is is kind of a cool experience. Um, but at some point it becomes like too much. <laughs> we could cut up the play button on a laser cutter and send that out. Yeah, I was thinking about doing that. We're, I actually don't even know where the play button is. It's somewhere in here still in the box. But like, I remember I helped a friend who did a Kickstarter project years ago and he was making this camera that would go on a bicycle and when it tips over, it would like save the footage in like the like a ring buffer. It would take five minutes to clip, very similar to how the Tesla uh, um, dash cam works. So actually most dash cams work where it's like five minute clips and it like keeps overriding the oldest one. And okay. if it detects something happen, it like locks certain clips around that event. Anyways, yeah, like how normal camera. dash cam works. Yeah, how normal, normal dash cam works. So he like had a bicycle dash camera uh, basically like 2013 maybe. That's like like almost 10 years ago now. He did a Kickstarter campaign, sold like 1,500, had like 3,000 made, and it was essentially like an OEM product. So he worked with a company. That, you know, I mean, he didn't like make the camera. He worked with a company to use their camera tech and then build into a custom uh, camera solution. And he had to update the firmware. But he had to update the firmware on 3,000 of them. Oh no. And what you don't realize is 3000 is a lot. I mean, I realize after doing 500 how much 3000 is. Let's say you charge your phone every night with USB. Yeah. You plug it in and you unplug it. And there's how many days in your 365. So imagine like like 7 years or 8 years of plugging a phone in and out like the USB cord. I'm surprised. I wonder if the USB cable started to break. Like are they even rated for that? So well, what he did, I have some pictures. I think I think it might be some on my Instagram, actually. He had USB hubs on USB hubs on USB hubs. So he like maxed out the USB bandwidth of like whatever, how many devices the USB can oh, support. Oh, yeah. And basically plugged a bunch of cameras in at the same time. Like pulled a little flap off, plug a bunch of cameras in at the same time. Oh, the flap. And then had a, had a script. I wrote a batch script, but he ended up using something else uh, that basically would drag... It would, it would copy the new firmware file to the SD card on the camera, and then it would, like, disconnect that device. And then I think we had to, like, manually power cycle them. <laughs> God, holy. And when, he, when you power cycle with the new firmware file, it would, it would uh, install the new firmware. And so, but it was, like, it was, it was, like, imagine, like, every day, all day, for, like, weeks. No. I didn't do, I only helped him do it for, like, one day. Uh and, and I guess maybe you could do it like as you ship them out, but I guess they were kind of like all right. due to be shipped out at once. Right, right. He made another mistake too, where he uh, it actually might be interesting to talk to him on the podcast. This is giving me anxiety just factor. thinking about that. It was like the Squid <laughs> Game stuff, you know, where it's yeah. like oh, every oh, little yeah. minute task you get carpal tunnel. I mean, like I think I, I would looking... just send them out with a note. I would print out three thousand sheets of paper that says follow these steps. But like, like Squid Game was like another reminder of this. Actually, I think this is the first episode that we've recorded since that video posted. We sat in a room for 10 hours, and I still think, I think Nigel might have had one of the worst jobs. 
Um, how how did your fingers feel after doing that? Because you you take you took the Squid Game PCB. Well, they were sore for a day or a couple days. Because you had to put the clasp on them for the landing. Oh, if you did, if I didn't have plastic gloves, it's impossible. What were you doing? What was your strategy? Were you sort of like trying to? Because you you can't do anything with your hands. You sort of have to. No, like... you have to push it on the board and then kind of like snap it on. The problem is the clips were like kind of small and round. Mm -hmm. So it's like if your if your hands get any sweat on them. You have to hold them. I don't know how to describe it, but like you have to hold them. It's like I've, I've an SD. Oh yeah, I have an SD card. I actually do have. Yeah, yeah, that's a good demo. So it's like it's a little like stiff, kind of almost like a carabiner style clip, but it's like it's there's no spring. It's like a, a almost like a paper clip. Like it's a, I don't know if you ever seen a lanyard. They're all kind of the same. So it has um, to kind of you know snap on there. Yeah, so you have to put quite it's a bit stiff, of force. It, this is pretty stiff. And it's, it's a lot like, stiffer than you, you can, think it is. You can do one of them easily. You just have to hold it like that, and you just have to make sure you push and then slide it in. But it's like... So were your fingers, like, bruised? Like, the tips of your fingers? I think they were just sore. Like, they just ached. Here's a good <laughs> so, way to do it. Kind of put it on there, like... Yeah, like, that's how you That's yeah. how you have to do it. Yeah. But it's like, if your fingers get sweaty, the thing just slips. But the, the thing that was more annoying, honestly, more annoying than all that, was the, the lanyards came as a like in a bird's nest so ben was just like picking them up and and having to that was like a whole job in itself just just making oh them not a, so like what what would stress me out is when the boards were piling up and i just had a it's like when you yeah it's like it was a big nest it was like headphone wires all wrapped yeah. up and then boards are piling up so the faster you go the, the yeah. worse it is <laughs> ben really helped though like him and tyler spent a lot of their time just like Undoing I feel the, like that uh, assembly line still even probably could have used like one or two extra people. And well, I was gonna say the thing that um, like after I watched your video, uh, there's so much stuff that you can't fit everything. I know. But I was like the one factor that uh, I I mean I say I would have liked to see, but I understand that it's hard to fit everything <laughs> and have it make sense. Yeah. Um, is the fact that like that whole production line was like just if there was one fewer people like. One less, it would I don't know, bad. fewer per. I can't even speak one English. One less person. One, one less person. I don't know. Yeah, it, Whatever. It it would have been a disaster. Yeah. It's like every single person yep. was necessary. But I'm saying the reason I'm saying this is Tyler and Ista were only there because you had them deliver the boards. Oh yes. yeah, if without yeah. them, and they didn't have to stay. They decided to stay. I because they thought it would be fun. And then think, I was ah. only there, but I was only there because. You wanted Alan to help solder stuff, and I just was like, case, yeah. "Well, it would be fun just in case if I went." And then I brought my friend, yeah, Reggie, Reggie, yeah, Reggie. just because I was like, "This is a good experience. It'll be fun to come. To, like, I, I want you to come with me and have like a good time." <laughs> I don't know if that happened, but we probably could have corralled some of the Mr. Beast crew, but it would not have been as fun. You know, we could have gotten we, some. I had a good. That's time. true. I, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. I, honestly, no, I liked it. I don't. I'm not sure I but, could think of a better. Like, no matter how horrible it was, because it was horrible, probably because of sleep. Lack of sleep was definitely the worst part. I think the problem was I liked that whole like the lanyard part. Yeah, it was like what we talked about. It's like it's stressful, but it's stressful in a way that you're like, I only have one yeah. job, and I <laughs> that, that's all. Like, you're just hyper focused on one thing, I, and it's just repetitive movements, and you're like, yeah, I'm doing it. Like, you're getting. I think reward, that's, that's but something... there's not much brain power. Right. It, that kind of makes me think of like Legos, right? Like, like yeah. it's hard to explain doing kind of like creative work or like, like where you have to solve like a really complex problem. Mm. Like, like look at uh, the guy who writes um, Game of Thrones. What's his name? George R. R. Martin. George R. R. Martin. Like, he hasn't finished writing the final books. Like, is it because he's lazy or is it because it's really hard to A, write a book and then B, yeah. close up like loose ends and, you know, C, yeah. make the audience happy it's, with it's, how you did it. It's project creep. That's exactly yeah. what it is. And so like when someone gives you a job where you just sit there and look at one little thing and do it over, like that's, I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes like I love doing YouTube, but I think a lot of times people, they vastly underestimate the amount of like, like how difficult it actually is. Like, oh, you just sit in your room and I, make videos. And it's you, like, yeah, I mean, they, kind of. You know, but. people expect too much because yeah. the more work it is, the less fun it is. And then that kind of comes through in the mm. video. I think the ideal YouTube video is 
you know, YouTube back in the day. It's like there wasn't even a concept of being a YouTuber. It was just like some guy having fun and that other people watch. But now there's like too much feedback, yeah, a lot of it negative feedback. Right. You know. I just watched a video from Dan Mace today uh, that he posted yesterday. Remember, he was filming some stuff with Casey Neistat, um, the South African dude who says, bruh, 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 bruh. Mm. Uh, and he did, he filmed a little thing about Logan Paul's new art project, which is like, uh, actually, honestly, I think probably the, the best way to do NFTs. I know people like, I mean, I don't, I don't, but what Logan's doing is he's taking a Polaroid picture. Uh, he took one like every day for 99 days. So I, I think he, he took more, he like took like 4,000 and they like filtered them and picked the best ones to represent each day, like from the, the shoots that they were doing. And so it's, it is like an actual art project and then they're just attaching it to nfts which is like yeah what feel however you want about that but dan in his video talking to logan it was it's it's like kind of like a little mini kind of documentary about logan's project is interesting uh basically talks to logan about how you deal with the audience kind of like expecting things like you want them to like what you're doing and blah 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 and it's it's like man dude everybody deals with it like everybody deals with that stuff of like that that self-consciousness from uh feedback Man, I don't know. After all the other stuff that Logan's done with NFTs. Honestly, I think if more people did NFTs like this, like they would not have nearly as bad of a rap. Because this, this feels like actually art and then combining it with an NFT. Whereas the rest of the NFT ecosystem, I genuinely, it's, a, I don't want to say a scam, but people are definitely using it <laughs> as a scam. <laughs> That's true. They're not all scams, but uh, a lot of them are. I think, yeah, I think there's enough <laughs> in the art scams where it is actually like, it's bad. I, don't I would I don't say know. pretty much any computer generated one is a scam. Yeah. Except for know. maybe the monkey or the bored ape. Cause that's the first is it? one. I think everything else oh, besides that. Everyone just trying to capitalize on the idea of it. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's like, if it's not original, then why are you buying it? Yeah. In my opinion, everything else is kind of like knockoff. But I think knock at the off. end of the day, like that's kind of my thought on creating content. Like you were saying about the original YouTube, old YouTube, where it's like, people just sort of messing around, having fun. It was less exactly. like serious projects, you know, people kind of, I don't know, doing whatever. And now everything seems to be, I don't know. I just like, I like doing stuff where it's like, I have, I want to try something. I want to do this thing. I'm gonna make a video about it. That's why you got to make shorts, man. Mm, yeah, shorts kind of solve the problem, but. No, they don't, they don't. It, it'll it'll, they, it'll they, circle they, back to exactly the same problem, I think. They create their own problems. What I'm trying to say though, is that our Patreon support big brain galaxy brain polaroid project is our new nft <laughs> no this podcast was sponsored by brilliant.org we have a sponsor for today's podcast it's brilliant well it's, i mean the sponsor is brilliant the best way to learn anything is by doing it yourself and brilliant lets you learn interactively with hands-on lessons in math science and computer science these interactive courses help you learn faster than just watching lecture videos want to learn about data structures and computer science they have an interactive course want to learn about multivariable calculus do you like pain and stuff actually multivariable i think is the easiest calculus uh, even though it took me two times to pass it in school Yep, that's right. They have an interactive course on multivariable calculus. Instead of just memorizing, Brilliant teaches you how to think about STEM by guiding you through fun problems. You'll get practice with real problem solving that helps you train your critical thinking and creative problem solving skills. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for listeners. Head to brilliant.org slash safety third. Get your tail out of there. Head to brilliant.org slash safety third to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 listeners will also get 20% off an annual membership. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this episode of the podcast all right i want to mention something about the squid game project that i don't you know you you might want to mention some other things that you didn't get to in the video but one of the problems that will never mentioned that kind of drove me especially crazy and i wanted to strangle uh will because of this is see these little lanyards they <laughs> were hitting this little microcontroller right there and they were shorting it out and a couple no. people maybe about 10 people their squib burst. Kevin, had to... I still don't know if that's actually the problem. It was no. definitely. I've done it. No, I, no, I don't the reason. Think so. I don't. This th is Will, what I'm talking Will, about. Will, Will. This was the reason. Will, I agree with Kevin for two reasons. A, he tested it and it did make it go off. And one of them that went off, we witnessed it. She bent. I forget it was he or she bent down. The lanyard thing touched it. A spark went off, and then the thing popped. Like we. Were I think I might even have it on camera. The reason I say that I'm still not sure <laughs> is because even after we taped them all, 
we were still having it happen. We had to yes, tape but we believe that was more every user single error. one. Two pieces of duct tape right here and right here. I said, why can't we put a piece of duct tape over this? Over Don't the mess whole... with the antenna. We can't because you can't mess with the antenna. And no, it's a, that's not how it works, Will. It's Kevin, a, it's, Kevin. It goes through Kevin. walls. <laughs> it's a it. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, you I tape, know. man. But here's the thing. Okay. The chance that it wouldn't is pretty high. It wouldn't mess with it. But do you really want to take that chance and ruin Mr. Beast's squid game? I think that was it. I think everyone was so paranoid that it's just like... The we would ra- he would rather have like ten pop squibs yeah. than sitting there and just sweating at maybe it block the antenna. It's like protocol, right? Like the reason protocols exist is because you're not yeah. allowed to break the rules. Because if you break the rules, everything becomes open to interpretation. And it's like, will putting tape over the antennas block it? No. Is there some maybe very horrible weird thing that could happen that would screw the whole project up? And it's like a point oh one percent chance of that happening. Yeah. So like, <laughs> like, what's the best way to do it? Is like to wrap the lanyard with tape, and I, you know, I don't know. It's just it's one of those things where if you had, if we had more time, it wouldn't have been a problem. You could put a conformal coating on the PCB. We do, yeah, that's what we thought about doing conformal coats and stuff, but like there was no time. Yeah, because that would have been like one extra day, and it just wouldn't have worked. And even then, even then, like, what if it's like a static charge issue? Like, what if it's static electricity that's causing the boards to short? And, and it's not actually the lanyard. It's like, like maybe it's a coincidence. It's like, you don't really know until you like thoroughly test it out. And if you don't have time to thoroughly test it, like you're just playing a game. That... I'm on Kevin's side, 100%. No, I mean, I, I'm on your side too. I'm just saying like, <laughs> like imagine. I know, I know, I know. You know I what know. I'm saying? I just like, I'm all okay for risk, but in like a situation like that, like, do you want to be the person who made a call to try something that then like completely messes everything up? And then it's just like, I'd rather have a couple more squibs blow up and just fix those than deal with. Well, that was Kevin's position. He's like, I'm just here to help, man. If, if, if it all fails because of, <laughs> you know, Will yeah. agreeing with me, it's like I'd yeah. rather just, you know, yeah, no responsibility. Dude, there's a lot of stuff where it's like not, there's no clear answer. There was a few things that happened. I think it was with me. I don't remember what they were. But, like, I made a suggestion, and I was pretty sure of it. But, again, the same thing as Kevin. I'm like... I, if this isn't true, I'm not. I'm not taking responsibility. Like what we should have done if we had been like, I mean, what we do next time is just get lanyards with plastic clasps. Wait, yeah. next time? Isn't there no next time? No, I'm just saying, you know, like if there, if this wasn't like a one-off, <laughs> I don't think I would. Do. Well, no, I wouldn't. Unless they wanted. If they didn't, we talk about. We said, we said, how long will it take to remember this as a good time? I asked that. <laughs> Is there a word for like I want to? I'm trying to figure out how to describe the whole uh, the whole process of that because it was like I'm I'm afraid to say this, but like I would say it was one of the worst times of my life, but it was also one of the greatest experiences of my life. Like from from being able to just like you know start up a little hardware project like that and have insane amounts of money to throw at it that like I would never be comfortable spending you know, my own money doing something like that. I'd be like, that's insane. Like I'll just wait a bunch of time. Um, and so I learned a lot and we got to see a lot of like behind the scenes of mm. Mr. Beast stuff. We got to hang out with Jimmy. Uh, but the, the, that three weeks was really rough. <laughs> you had it the roughest for sure. Yeah. Like even before we showed up, me and Alan were just like almost laughing at how bad your life was when I've you been called going us for, like, in Colorado two weeks before I saw you guys. I'm saying you were like calling us from Colorado saying you're in the video. You're like, I'm in a parking lot, just waiting. Alan and we were like, this is like, we're like, this is bad. Like, this is, this is like, we we're like, this guy's dead before he even, sh- before we even showed up. Uh, I want to say the, the part that I found one of the hardest was that like, I know nothing about electronics. I don't know anything about programming. And it's like, at least Kevin knows he knows way more than I do, but I'm saying that like you guys designed the board. Mm-hmm. Kevin didn't, so it's like, but at least he, if you explained it to him, he would understand. I don't get anything. Right. So I found the hardest thing for me was at the event when people who worked on the Mr. Beast team thought that I had even a remote clue as to <laughs> anything that was happening. Like I didn't know, I learned as the days went on, right. but it's like I didn't really understand what a squib was when I showed up. Dude, that was like, I wonder how many people in the video that are watching the video even know what a squib is. Cause that was like, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how do you, mm. how do I explain what a squib is? 
Like, had you ever seen a squid before this? I mean, I guess if you've seen the Hollywood video. Yeah, I, I knew the ones, that, the things that popped and everything. I just didn't know, like, the word. You taught right. me the word, basically. Right. There were multiple times there where, like, a Mr. Beast employee went, came up to me, and they're like, come here, come here, like, how to fix this. And they show me some technical thing, and I'm like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Yeah. Like, it's not that I don't know how to fix it. I actually don't know what they're talking about. Right. But... I felt I was in this position that you had to, like, give them some sort if of answer. I said I didn't know what I was talking about, it would scare them because they thought that I was right. a person of authority. So I would have to like pretend that I, I, I was, don't know how, like, they, how they didn't figure that out at some point. There was really only a couple people that they like should have been going to. Like they should have been going to like me, George, or Harlan. They were asking me like high level like you know management questions <laughs> yeah. about the whole production, and I'm like. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, that sounds fine. Go, you know, go do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it. just like, but it, you feel like you can't just say you're incompetent because it would be like, it would look bad. So you just, yeah. you have to figure out how to not give them an answer, but seem like you know what you're talking about. I'm like, yeah, I think that sounds good. Let me go, uh, you know, check with it. If that's good with the other guys, we'll let you know. I think a few times Kevin came back and it's like, they mentioned something. He just throws out a few keywords. I'm not exactly sure what they're <laughs> Big talking data, about. Synergy. <laughs> yeah. uh, something about like schedule. Wi-Fi, uh, Ubiquity Air, Air, airdrops pods, i don't know AirPods. yeah but then you or george would be like okay who was it you'd say what they looked like and they would just yeah it's leave the, bald, and fix the bald it. guy that speaks with a finnish <laughs> accent they're like oh yeah okay that, that's the oh, i think God. after a while though they realized that like you said there was you george and harlan were like when they had a problem you just like you were always there when the problem was solved where it seemed probably like me kevin and other people always had to confer with other people so they just and then one of you guys showed up so they're like we're just gonna not ask them anymore yeah because we fixed all of the the problems with the pcb and the igniters and all mm. of that all that was ready to go for this you know mr beast squid game but then all of the networking problems started oh, to yeah. happen and it was like that was a nightmare and it wasn't even like they started to happen it's just like you know how stuff is you gotta you know the part your Wi-Fi that, at home drops out randomly. It doesn't yeah. doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. It's just like something like that happens, and then it's like, you know, why did that happen, or is that something that we caused? So everybody right. had to find out what's going on, and everybody that was like the guards, you know, the Squid Game guards in the red jumpsuits, uh, the phones would, you know, there's a problem. Everybody had a phone. There's a problem, so I had to go through about a hundred phones, and you know, I change like some Wi-Fi setting. Thing, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just choose so like the right much. Wi-Fi network, dude. I, yeah, I had to the put the right one. Wi-Fi networks, and I had to turn on some like, you know, I don't even know what. There to was call it. one thing I remember oh, yeah. where the the devices were on a different Wi-Fi network than mm -hmm. the Raspberry Pi that was acting as the web server. So there was like this weird like trickle through where like somehow the data was like m like migrating through networks, and there was like a delay, but it like it worked. And so nobody, we just like didn't touch it. Yeah, it would work and they would explode, but it wouldn't show that they exploded for a while. Yeah. And then if you like yeah. hit it again, it would mark them as not exploded. Right. So they had to fix that delay. There was, and there was another thing too. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff too. Some of it we like won't talk about, but like uh, the, the igniters were rocket motor igniters and I, we had ordered a bunch. And so we shipped them from California because this, this was like essentially the electronic ignition It's like, the rocket motor igniter provides the ignition source, which then burns a couple pieces of mm. uh, like firework fuse, which is capsulated inside of a little container with a hole in it. And it, the gas vents out the side of the hole and melts through the plastic. So it's not explosive. It's not like an open flame. It just creates like directed hot gas. It's like putting a match up against a Ziploc bag. Yeah, yeah basically. Is. But you need quite a bit of heat because the water will quickly wick away. And so you yeah. have to like, you have to inject a lot of energy quickly to melt the plastic. You can so, actually boil water in a plastic bottle. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, which is crazy. So like you I need a lot of energy. heat really fast, like concentrated through the little hole. Like when you talked about it, Will, when you first said, you're like, can I just shoot like some fire on a plastic, a piece of like a plastic bag? I originally said, I'm like, probably not. And it, it like, it doesn't work. Like you have to have, you have to have a bunch of energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a quick blast. You really have to do that. And you know what's something interesting that we discovered kind of like after we finished, but it didn't matter, is they actually make resistors, little resistors purposefully made to catch on fire and spark. They're called like pyrotechnic PCB resistors. And it's a thing. <laughs> it's like but a they, cost like, they cost like they cost like four bucks each. Oh really? That. Yeah. They're like oh eight, oh five size and they four dollars you know, each. Of, is that how when like in movies when the servers explode, they just have a bunch of those? Oh maybe. <laughs> 
but we, we so we, we got these rocket motor igniters and we shipped them but they got shipped like three day shipping instead of overnight because we were overnighting everything so they got shipped three day shipping and it's like sunday or it's like friday or saturday i think saturday and we're like where's that box like we're looking for this green it was a hello fresh box because <laughs> you just like you know use an old box here and uh it was nowhere to be found and we didn't know the tracking number and so what happened was we threw george who is whose house i went to to like build the squib when we assembled it um his dad does rocketry and so his dad called a bunch of people and we just like this rocket network like bled out until we found a source of igniters and there was one source in new york but that was like too far but we ended up finding someone like across the state like three hours away and so well, I was going to say, you you were even suggesting before you found that guy, you were asking me or somebody else if we could fly to New, to York, New York and get a rental car to pick it up or or whatever, like go there really quick yeah. to get it. And I just landed in North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> and long story short, we ended up buying rocket igniters from this old dude for like a thousand dollars and uh, for, for all of them. And they were pretty nice igniters too. So I don't think he totally ripped us off, but he basically was like, well, not There's I, way I, too much I, wire. He's like, you have to be here before <laughs> yeah. 8 PM or something. And we're like, it was like three hours away. And we sent a, one of the Mr. Like a Mr. Beast assistant to go do it. And like, we're not going to get there by 8 PM. And he's like, like, uh, well, like, can you, if you stay up, we'll pay you another thousand dollars. And he's like, okay. <laughs> so we literally paid this guy $2,000 <laughs> to stay up for probably like a couple hundred dollars worth of rocket motor igniters past 8 PM. Yeah. The, the part that I wanted to say was that all of the, because uh, remember they originally, the original way you built them didn't work mm -hmm. because you showed in the video, like sparks flew. Right. They so you had sealed. to on the fly redesign them. Yeah. I think you redesigned them. Was it the day? It was the day it before. The, it, no, it was the day of. The day of that we did yeah. all the mass production yeah, yeah. Um, and you needed straws. And we found out that McDonald's straws were the optimal size and Yeah, they could hold size two, little, and two little cuttings yeah. of a black powder fuse, like a centimeter yes. long, that you would put yeah. in there, and then you would crimp it shut with like a yeah. heat seal. Yeah, and we had heat sealers. We'd heat seal one yeah. end of the straw, stick the fuse and the uh, the igniter in, mm -hmm. then put hot glue and then you on have to top cut of it, a and, hole. Then, and then clamp it shut with pliers to like, because you couldn't really heat seal mm -hmm. it again with the wire. I mean, you probably yeah. could have it. And then poked a hole in the top. In the side, we still ended up using some of the tape ones too that were made out of masking tape. Yeah, they did work. It didn't really matter that much. Over. It didn't. Yeah. It, but the the McDonald's ones did work. The thing that I wanted to say, which I thought was funny, yeah. was when we needed straws, you sent me out to go and get them, and we're like, we don't think the, uh, none of the stores were open at that time, right? Because everything closed early. It's all drive through. Well, no, no. I'm saying the stores were closed. So I was just oh, like, I couldn't go to Walmart oh, so to get oh, straws. I think was it just straws in general and you ended up at McDonald's or yeah, something? Yeah. So we were like, you have to go like, and somehow. Because we tested the straw from a, like oh, a, we had somebody had got McDonald's. a drink. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 Right, right, right. And it worked and it was consistent. Um, and Tommy <laughs> did like eight tests. He was, you know, frantically testing. Yeah. So I had to, I went on a mission with Reggie to go and find straws. But we're like, the only places that have them are fast food restaurants. And you're like, we need at least a hundred. And I was just like, so, but it's COVID, so they don't have them out. <laughs> so I couldn't just go in and, and steal them. Or I think I went out. I think I, they did have a couple, but there was like three. So it's like you can't. I so I went. I remember, social engineer, the McDonald's well, so, employee. But, so what happened was I went to like the little self-serve menu at McDonald's. And I was like, okay, I can get a small drink for like 50 cents or something. Or I'm so, so worst case scenario it's like 50 or $60 for the straws. I'll just right. buy 60 waters and then just whatever. I was like, worst case scenario. But I'm like, I might as well ask. It was one of the weirdest interactions I've ever had. Because we walked up to the, the, the re where you receive your food. Or I think it was actually the caches. We walk up and the manager is like, can I take your order? And I just go, this might be an odd question. Um, can I just have a, like a, can I get, have, buy a bunch of straws? Can I just have a bunch of straws? And he's like, he just looks at me and goes, how many do you need? And I'm like, at least a hundred. He didn't even say anything. He's, he just turned around and walked away. And so I turned to Reggie. I'm like, okay, uh, like, I don't know what's happening. On us. <laughs> he just, he just walked, he just walked to the back and I was like, uh, I, I don't know what he's doing. And then I just see him like walking around a bit, like just doing stuff. Then he walks back to the back. Then he comes back with like a paper McDonald's bag filled with straws. 
and he yeah. just hands it to me and then walks away. He doesn't even say Dude. here enjoy nothing. There was not even a Dude. question. Bless he that to man. elaborate leaves. He just, that guy, that guy was, has no he, idea. He did, he did. Shout out to the McDonald's in Greensville, North Carolina. You saved Mr. Beast's Squid Game. He it wasn't even like it was the weirdest interaction because he didn't not only did he not ask, it wasn't even like he went okay like or you're welcome nothing. The moment I asked was just silence until I got the straws and then we just left. What are the chances of that happening versus them just telling you to piss off? I, I, I think we, the conclusion we had was that stuff like this must happen there. Like there might be Mr. Beast employees who just go around and ask for stuff. And they just were like, that's the only, here in Montreal, if you did that, the first question is why? Huh. Maybe if it was just like the tax he had to pay to get you out of the store. He's like, yeah. I don't want to deal yeah. with this guy. Just He's take just the hundred like... straws. But he did work to like get me those straws. It's just so odd that he didn't even say like, you're welcome. He just yeah, what, literally handed things. it to me and then walked away. Is this the birth of the McDonald's straw challenge? Yes. Walk into a McDonald's, <laughs> ask for straws, straws and see how many you, you can get. No, God, no. We They did 1, us a favor. 1,000. <laughs> All I know is that I learned a lot of very valuable lessons and a lot of things in general on this, <laughs> uh, on that project. And, and, you know, somehow still made a mistake of, uh, offering people handmade items which have a logistical nightmare attached to them of keeping track of who ordered like who who, like I said, who signed up for Patreon when and how the long the moment ago. I saw that I had a brain aneurysm it's you know we'll figure it out how bad could it be <laughs> but I was gonna say the part is I didn't tell you because I'm like oh that's Will's problem because I don't know why it'll be in fine. my head no but in my head somehow you were handling everything. I didn't realize that I had to take Polaroids. Well, I mean, you can come here and I'll take Polaroids of you. <laughs> I'm just saying in my head, I'm like, that's his problem. He can deal with it. Then I realized that by not speaking up, it, it was my problem the whole about, time. You guys fly to Los Angeles. Like Kevin's been flying a lot. And then uh, we'll have... But that's we'll more just... work than the Polaroids. No, yeah, but at least it'll be fun. I have to see you and take the Polaroids? That's oh horrible. Okay. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Canada. Can we? Are we allowed in Canada yet? Yeah, wait. Why don't we just do it a month from now in Florida? I mean, it's going to be late for people. Are they going to care? That's a good point. I mean, if we're all there, yeah. Okay, maybe maybe we'll just do it just so we can get on top of things and figure out how to uh, keep track of keep, keep a database to keep track of. So uh, I think it would make more sense if it was like one po like it would every three months is the tough part because it's like like you said you have to keep resetting yes. the clock yep. and tracking maybe if you say whoever signed up between like january and march will get a polaroid ship yeah, like this a three and month like, window yeah so it's like yeah, if but you people, signed but up three months is a pretty big window that's the only problem is like i would just you just just ship them is what i would do i would just i wouldn't even waste time yeah but what it. about three months from now then everybody everybody gets another one I mean, you're always going to have people that like just join and try to get here, it and then here leave. We, but... This is the only way to do it that I can think of. You get a random Polaroid, no guarantee which one you're going to get. It's like yeah. collector cards. Yeah. You I like that. Stay, that's that's, that's how the I only thing I can say. You have to stay subscribed long enough to collect them all. Yeah. Watch, they're like, I got like eight Kevins. Uh, are you kidding? <laughs> just, that's a win. Uh, <laughs> you only get one person like It's going to be kind of over. like Exodia. It's going to be me like this on one card. It's going to be yeah. me like that on the other card. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and then this oh is my God. the final card. <laughs> you can build the whole You need the Kevin. sixth card, the dong, the, the yeah. super dong card. No, you need five cards just for that. I went to uh, um, like a Dave and Buster's, but like a different brand in Texas, like, like last year, and they had this like SpongeBob. What's the coin cliff game where you put the? Oh, it's got like the it. pusher thing. Yeah, you the mean? pusher. I don't know what it's called, pusher. but I know what you mean. Uh, and so one of the things, you know, some of these machines are fancy. They put a bunch of other crap in there too, and it's just like tokens. It's not a casino. It's an arcade, and um, they'll put like like plastic coins like big like kind of casino coins or oh, yeah. like chips or they'll put cards and so the cards have like i think it was wizard of oz characters and we got every single wizard of oz character except for one i think it was like the dog or something and i was looking around the entire machine and i'm like there is not a single dog card here and i'm like this is bullshit <laughs> this entire game is rigged because you can get six cards, but to get the seventh card and get the huge bonus, you can't get it oh. because it doesn't exist because they only put like two in the stack. So there's a bunch of every card except one card. 
So at the, that, that like 3,000 ticket bonus isn't for collecting seven. It's literally just for getting the dog, basically. So you'd have to bring all the cards up to the counter or something and they yep. give you your... Because I remember going to the counter and I like, I mean, I'm just me. I complain. Yeah. That <laughs> I'm just like, hey, like, uh, there's no dog in the machine. How are we supposed to get the bonus? And he's like, oh, they only put like one in the pack. And I was like, oh. So it's a scam. Convenient. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that stuff like that. I mean, when it's real money, I guess it makes more sense that it's illegal. But dude. Arcades taught uh, me not to gamble at a casino from a young I know. age. Like hitting that Maybe button and watching yeah. the light like continue on for another couple of blinks after you push the button. And you know you hit it on time. I you know, know you hit I hit it. it. I mean, Mark did yeah. that, right? Mark did it. Mark made a... Yeah. A well, there's, a, there's a YouTube the video scam. as well where they... I don't think it was Mark's. It was like the stacking one mm-hmm. where the guy actually showed that it does... Oh, yeah. The one with the lights that go across. And yeah. Across, and you got to like line Dude. up three and then three and then three. And I don't know how that's legal. Then it becomes two. Isn't that how pinball machines... Like pinball machines were uh, almost banned because they were considered gambling and they had to prove that it was actually a game of skill. I mean, pinball definitely feels like skill. I think there is more skill, but like some of these arcade machines are actually straight up a rig, rigged system. No, there's some for sure ones. Like you go to, I mean, I don't have Dave and Buster's here, but when I go in the US and our equivalent like arcades here, there are a few of them where you're just like, it's just basically like Kevin said, kid gambling. Like Mm. it's completely rigged and you can't win. Like even the coin one you said is pretty, I mean, I guess that's a bit skill, but it's like, it's so deceptive because you always think it's, so it is, you're, that's just a game of numbers. That's, that's just a game. That, that one I feel like is fair up until putting the freaking cards, the plastic cards, but only one of them has like, a, you know, rarity to mm. keep you from getting the, the full set bonus. That's bullshit. What about Otherwise, the, the, arcade the game games, is totally fair. The ones where like you go to the arcade game and it's just you spin a wheel. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's... And it's just, you just spin a wheel. That's it. Like, I know. I'm pretty sure it, do, they do that at the casino. So. Yeah, and you gotta like hit the stop button or something. Like no, no, that. Kevin, I'm saying like, oh, this, it's this... literally just a wheel. Oh, that's boring. You just spin it, and whatever it lands on is what you get. Here's my wager. I bet you, if you took half the arcade games in existence and stuck them in a casino, they would be illegal. <laughs> yeah. I bet you. I think that they they the games in an arcade violate the rules that uh, um, control casino games, like actual gambling. Yeah, you have to have like proven odds or something. Yeah. I'm pretty sure with that. But the instant know, it's a, an arcade machine. where you get tickets and prizes, then it's a problem. Which to me, like the the prizes are garbage anyways. Like how how much money could they possibly cost? Like why do you rig the games like that? So it's like gambling by. Like, I mean, it's just proxy gambling, right? It reminds. Yeah. Did you ever? I don't know what it's called. The uh, what's it called? Like the pachinko or something in in Japan. Oh yeah, okay. with the metal balls that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember around. my cousin lives there and he was telling me about it. We did go and it's just like you you like Those fall apart from the light stimulation when you go there and <laughs> the, the noise. The, um, but he was telling me how he's like, uh, gambling's illegal. But then it's like, why do people do it? And he was just like, he was his explanation was, he goes, you go there, it's just a fun game. But you get like, tokens or whatever you get. Don't proof you how get many, steel like, balls? Like that's the currency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, but you, you like, get sell them, them and then you... It's well, you get price? the balls, I and know. I think. No. Well, no, you get the. You, he was like saying he goes the way the system that he was showing us worked. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if it's the same all around Japan, but he was like, you get the steel balls, and I think you put them in a machine there, and like it prints a ticket saying that you had that many. So, quote, the next time you come back, you can continue playing with all your steel balls. And he goes, but you know, just coincidentally, there's some you know steel ball enthusiasts down the street. Who are willing to take your coupon for steel balls in exchange for goods or oh money or whatever? Nice. So it's like, I mean, they just will, they're just enthusiasts. They're just buying it so they can go play the game. That is genius. <laughs> so it's like, it's illegal, but it's like, there's just these, it's basically just they took I, the cashier's center and just made it down like the this. road. <laughs> there's something like this in Florida. There used to it be. Was, it was Florida. Yes, <laughs> it was with Kevin. And it yeah. was like, there's there's two businesses. Yeah. yeah. Unaffiliated. It's, They're you know not what affiliated. It is? It's, phone, <laughs> it's like international phone minutes, like on a calling card. It's like, how can we make something that's not money, but is so obscure that you can't easily inflate it? <laughs> Nobody wants it. Or, right. Or, yeah. And so like, they literally have a casino where the money is like, funneled in with like a w- obscure gift card that nobody would <laughs> that ever nobody be able to like use. buy. Yeah. Like imagine yeah. going to like Mexico 
and finding this weird restaurant that has a gift card you can buy that you can never buy in the States and you have to do it only in person and you buy a bunch of those gift cards and then you bring those to your casino and you give those to people. Where it's like, you've created a thing that can't be inflated easily, <laughs> but nobody actually wants it. So you can only trade it in for things. Like, it's insane. But genius. It's it, genius. It's, actually, it's, it's genius. <laughs> yeah, so you go in there and you buy. There's like a machine in there that vends out. You put in a $20 bill and you get like, you know, 2,000 minutes to call Brazil it's, with or something like that. <laughs> it's, not so a non, it's a non-fungible. It's a, it's a very difficult fungible token. <laughs> Wait, so Kevin, so what do you do with that, that thing uh, you, then? You like swipe it at, you know, the slot machines. You pay basically. you pay slots in phone yes. minutes. Yes. And then it gives you phone minutes back, and then you can go and get like prizes. I don't think you can get money, right? But you can get like actual legitimate no, prizes. No, you like I, you can get money. Oh, God. Yeah. It will, will. It makes sense, though, because a lot of people want to call Brazil. The only way they can afford to do it is by buying. Buying these obscure calling cards. Oh god. I, I think it'd be fun to, to do one of those arcade scam things. I feel like it's kind of saturated at this point, but like try to figure out how do you how do you get all the coins off of one of those coin pushers? Like can you reach like a resonant frequency of a quarter or something and like try to get the whole table to vibrate? Because a lot of them have like oh, plumb yeah. bobs, but the plumb bob won't be affected by like, you know, high energy, low frequency or high frequency, like low amplitude vibrations. So when I went to an arcade recently, um it was funny because Obviously, when they have the prizes, they're like, you can win this PS4, 400,000 tickets. You do the calculations. You're like, I have to spend like $8 million. But we went to the arcade, and we're talking to the the guy. He clearly didn't care. He was just like, oh, um, there's one of these games here. And he goes, we have a guy who comes here every day to play it. And I was, I actually said, I'm like, that's kind of sad. He goes, no. He goes, there's a, he goes, he has a scheme going. He goes, the, this, the guy working there is telling us the scheme. He goes, there's a daily bonus if you beat the high score, but it resets daily or something. So he goes, he shows up at like the moment it opens. It's in a movie theater. He shows up the moment it opens and he gets the first high score, but he goes, he just beats the computer high score by like a point. And then huh. he will, he goes, it's kind of hard, but then he'll go and actually get another high score. And I think there might be a limit of two bonuses per day or something. But he goes, the bonus is like a lot of points. So is it a bonus every time you beat the high score? Or is it whoever has the highest score at the end of the day? It's something like it gives you two bonuses at most, like every day. Okay. So it's like the first one he beats is like whatever's built into the computer. And then he just beats it again and then he leaves. Mm. It's something like that. So he just, but he was saying that he gets like 2,000 points a day right. for, two, for like a dollar or two. I was thinking, what if it was like whoever has the highest score at the end of the day gets the bonus. And so it's like, what he does is he comes in and he sets Yeah, but most people score. they don't they don't come back with for their, you know, bonus tickets. They they go to the arcade, right. they okay. they win, right. they buy their candy, they go home. No, but so Kevin what he does is he saves up. And so the the employee was telling me that he does it every day and gets like 1 or 2000 points. I don't know what it was. And it costs him like $2. Whereas normally getting that much would cost you probably like $40. Yeah. But he 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 and he pointed out he goes the guy is going to come in soon and get a Nintendo Switch, which is like a hundred thousand points. only three times the MSRP. <laughs> no, but he goes, it's a hundred thousand points, which if I, when I went and played for like $30, I got like 3,000 points. I, I think it was like, we calculated, it was like 50 bucks for the Nintendo Switch. Whereas if I played normally without that bonus stuff, it would probably be like $3,000 for the I feel Switch. like that's such a commitment. <laughs> It is. It's way I too know. much. And you have like, to wait a third of a Nintendo year. Switch. Like, go get a job. Like, you, like I nobody mean, I, else I mean, has that it. kind of time. Wait, no, no. You know? but, but Will has a point. Like, even if it takes him an hour per day, but if it takes him a month to get it, that's 30 right. hours. Right. And if the Switch is only $300, right. it's like he could he could literally just work at the movie theater. And the just... only, I mean, like, I, the, only, the only way it's justifiable if, if it's like a, this, his sort of like daily tradition. Yeah. Where it's kind of like, it's like, you know, waking up and doing a crossword puzzle. I, mean, I don't know <laughs> do him do that, but like. Playing the arcade game. Playing the arcade game where it's kind of like. like Maybe it's I like on Alex, his way to work. So I find it kind of funny that you're pointing out that even scamming the system isn't worth your time. Yeah. No. Well, like so that. you're totally screwed. The system is built for you to fail. Like, you can't even you, scam it. Like, like, the only yeah. <laughs> opportunity to steal from it is actually still just a huge it's waste. It's still not even worth it. <laughs> yeah, if you add it up, he's probably like equivalently making less than minimum wage. 
Like significantly yeah. less than oh, minimum yeah, wage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He might as well just work at the movie theater part time and then right. go and buy it. Alex Ernst was doing this thing and I was helping him for a while where we would go to thrift stores and we would find DVDs, Disney DVDs that had the a redemption code and you would mm. enter it onto their app and it would give you the like it was a similar system where you could build up points to get stuff like, you know, and you could get like you know, for high point values, you could get tickets, you could get mm. like behind the scenes tours and stuff like that. But you had to have like, like, I mean, I don't even think buying every movie in their catalog would have done. You would yeah. have to like buy shit multiple times, which is like, I. <laughs> it's like, who's this aimed at? Right. Nobody can win this. And so <laughs> what we were doing is just looking through like stacks and stacks and stacks of DVDs and taking pictures of the codes and then entering them in. And he was building codes up pretty fast because it turns out nobody does that because <laughs> it's just sort of stupid. But then we, he started getting paranoid of like, what if you do all this and you try to redeem a code and they say, well, show us like the receipts or show us proof that you still have the DVDs or something like that. Um, and so he never did anything. I'm kind of, I, I wish he would have followed through. I, I wonder if it's still something that he can, uh, yeah, I, I would on. like to see that. When he told me about that, I thought it was pretty cool. I've never heard of something a good like video that. Too, what a scheme. Like, <laughs> like how I scammed that's a good Disney, scheme. but like the scam ends up wasting like obscene amounts of his time and like <laughs> traveling around and going to, you know, it's like yeah. at the end of the day, it's like everybody lost. <laughs> you, Disney and it's like you get a backstage tour yeah. with the equivalent value of $200. <laughs> and yeah. you're like, it took me a but year to thing, do this. The only thing... The only thing that even makes it somewhat redeemable is the fact that you don't have to buy the DVDs. Yes. Oh, you, you had to buy it. You're done. It, yes. Take a picture. You just open close it. it. Exactly. And then you close it. Yep. Because it's already been opened. It's one of those things where it's like for a kid. This is like a kid thing where it's like you don't have a job. You can't get a job. But you have the, like the one resource you have infinite of and it's time. Yep. <laughs> There's really nothing more terrifying than a kid. Oh, yeah. Motivation and time. Because kids are crafty. Like... <laughs> I could break into any school computer, basically. Like, no password could keep me out. My mom trying to keep me off of the computer. You know, I'd always find a way back on the computer. I got banned from my uh, computer lab for a little bit because I stole oh. the administrator computer the password. Yeah, I, I, I did that. I did something. I don't know if I shared it. Something I never got in trouble. Did I share the one with the, the typing program? You told me that. Maybe. So there's that. There's, like, two stories. One is um, my dad would shut the power off to my room to turn my computer off because he didn't like me being on the computer even though look at me jokes on you dad i'm on the computer all day every day now <laughs> you can't <laughs> stop me uh and so i realized there was a second circuit going to my room so i ran an extension cord from that outlet to my computer then he figured that out and then using the power of anime and god i crawled into the breaker room and wired three circuits together to create the ultimate 60 no way amp, three 320 amp breaker surprise <laughs> An actual you, literal fire hazard. You and deserved my dad at to that have point power gave at up. that point. He couldn't figure it out. And I was like, all right, dad, I'll, I'll undo it. But don't turn my power off. And he was like, all right. That's pretty good. I think good. I wired it hot, too. Because it's like I couldn't turn the power off or they would know. So I like I did everything with it, with the lines live. And then in high school, the thing that I never got in trouble for, that I, they, were, they were so mad. Like they were so pissed off. There was in ninth grade a typing program. And uh, the default password and, ad, and username for the administration account was what they left it at because you know Don't say admin. teaching a computer class yeah it was like admin password admin password was admin password and so someone figured this out and i went in and started changing the lessons because you could go in and modify mm. the actual typing lessons and you know i mean you could imagine what a high school ninth grade high school kid would do oh yeah they they, they started off normal and just started getting wildly inappropriate like the deeper you got into it <laughs> <laughs> they were so mad and i remember i was Did they know it was out. you no they couldn't figure it out because they were like we you know we can track everything on the computers blah 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 you sure know, like, come yeah, forward sure. now and you'll get in less trouble and it's like you know my you know i'm not yeah a right ass. like I'll, that's a risk i'm willing to take so i didn't say anything and uh never got in trouble that's what you say when you ha are completely out of options yeah. <laughs> yep we've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas you know they go we track everything then 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 you already know who it I is. I know, I know. <laughs> like, but then they try to put, you know, like twist it as like an honor thing. Oh, if you have honor, we'll let you, we'll get you in less trouble, kind of thing. And it's like I have no but honor. Why? And I'm not afraid to admit <laughs> but, it. But, but, but it's like There's think no about that situation. It's like if you know who it is, why would you? Like that situation still makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, but if you're a kid, you're like terrified. I right? know, I like, get that. So I was gonna say what I did. I, I don't remember it too well. 
it was weird. It was a program. It's kind of a security flaw. If I like when you think about it. I burnt a, little, a, a program to a disc, and this was a service you could pay for. I don't remember how I got it for free. You just put the disc in, and when you boot the computer up, it would just like all. I don't know these like numbers would come up. And I don't know if I, I didn't have a phone at the time. I don't know if you wrote them down. I remember how I copied them. Were you just them. like running a brute force cracking program? Well, you could you could type it into a website and it just tells you what the local passwords were on the on the Windows computer. Wow. So it's like you type in the password mm. hash or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. The and password. it would decrypt it. Yeah. And just give you the, the password. But what happened was the computers we had in that room would always reset. They were all just like server computers kind of. Like every time you restarted it, it would be a new computer. But there would always be an admin account. And then yeah. that admin account, the password they used on that was the same one that they used for their server admin. So we were able to log into oh. the server admin by getting the password to the local computer. And then you have access to everybody's folders, all the teachers' folders. I feel like school IT like used to be really, really bad. It was extremely bad back when we, it was the golden age. Of like of messing with yeah, shit. you could install you could install StarCraft on like the local mm. direct or like you know the system wide directory, and then everybody could play the same game of StarCraft, like launching it from the main server or something like that. So I'm remembering what I did since we had admin access, and it wiped every time they wouldn't be able to track it. But that's what we did was you could just go into the admin account and then make your own account, like with all the all of like the permissions. So then, yeah, you yeah. you could, I mean, you can't really saw a game was so small you get caught, but it's like everything they'd prevent you from doing on the computers, you just had free reign. Yeah, this was like back in the day, you know, and they would try to block you from getting on websites. Yeah. But all they would do is put some like basic content filter on the internet. Yeah. So all you had to do was go to like, you know, onlinevpn.com. Mm. Yeah. And then you could go to free, my free Mac. Oh, yeah. You used to be able to type in IP addresses too. Instead yes. Instead of going we to did the that. We did that. Oh, at the, at okay. The and there's yeah. the other one too, where it was like, like what Kevin said, the, there's like a website that you could just type the website in and you'd browse the website through it's the like other a proxy. one or something. Yeah. yeah, it's called like Hide My Ass oh, was yeah. one of them. <laughs> I think I used something like that. Oh, God. But then I remember my, yep. the uh, school started, they gave up and they started just like blocking keywords, I think. But the problem is if that keyword popped up on a website. Oh, you know what's really like, sad? Like if, it's, if it noticed it loading it in a page, it would like just not load it or something. But it started like messing we with... We had that freedom... Yeah. And then we are nothing of the bad age, happened. like we are the people who cracked down on it. Yeah. That's and how we know how to crack to that's us. bullshit. It really sucks. Okay, we'll see you guys on the uh, yeah. uh safety third Patreon clip. If you guys wanna um participate in that, there's a link, you go to Patreon, you can support any of the tiers and you get access to the Don't the don't Discord do the one server. for a Polaroid though. Don't do that one. Don't do the Polaroid. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, if you're on the Polaroid one, Un undo it. Do it. Make Nigel's <laughs> life hell and sign up for the Polaroid. Okay, we'll see. We'll see everybody in a second, and then see everybody else next week.